microfiction anthology, a blog post written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's website. I discovered microfiction when I reviewed Loopholes by Susan McCreary in 2017. By definition, brevity is the key to good microfiction. The stories in Loopholes range from several paragraphs over one or two pages to only three short sentences. There's no room for plot and character development, so every word must count. McCreary plunges the reader into perfectly formed glimpses of everyday lives, with no time to settle in and catch our breath before wrenching us back to reflect on what we've read, what may have led to the situation, and how it might end. Microfiction relies on the writer's skills and the reader's imagination to tell a story, and McCreary's gift is writing immediately recognisable vignettes. A perfect example is the shortest piece in the collection, the three-sentence Tough Love. A father brings home his daughter from a hospital. We don't know the nature or extent of her injuries, but we are left believing in a father's love and determination for his daughter's recovery. The genre will not be to everyone's taste. Some readers may consider it a modern malaise, where the pace of life has become too fast to enjoy a leisurely read. Or Twitter-esque, with US presidential pronouncements delivered in 280-character tweets. And yet, microfiction is not a recent form. For example, legend has it that in response to a challenge to write a six-word novel, Ernest Hemingway wrote, For sale, baby shoes, never worn. As I mentioned in my review, I started dabbling in microfiction after reading Loopholes. I had a short story in my writing folder, Her, written in 1992, following a dream that felt so real, it reminded me of the 3rd century BC Chinese philosopher Zhuang Chao. One night, Chao dreamed he was a butterfly, fluttering hither and thither, enjoying itself to the full of its bent, unaware he was Chao. When Chao awoke, he was himself again, but later observed, I do not know whether I was then a man dreaming I was a butterfly, or whether I am now a butterfly, dreaming I am a man. I didn't dream I was a butterfly. Instead, I dreamed I'd bumped into someone I once knew, while walking along the Brighton Promenade in England, where I then lived. And I used elements from the dream to write a surreal short story. But at only 460 words, her was too short for the genre. So I filed it away until 2017, when I revisited the story and shared it as microfiction, later releasing her as episode 11 of Tall and True Short Reads. It's a warm, sunny day, and I'm strolling along Brighton Promenade during my lunch break. Seagulls are circling and squawking for my chips, and sunlight shimmers on the blue-green English Channel. I look away from the bright horizon and see her walking towards me. Her gaze is seaward too, but then she looks straight ahead and sees me. We stop and stare at each other, separated by 20 metres and 20 years. At the same time, I revisited other short pieces in my writing folder. There is no need to wake up, and I didn't even get convicted, which I'd written for local radio station competitions in 2000 and 2014. I also started writing shorter microfiction, like A Mona Lisa Smile and We Need to Talk, in 2018 and 2019. And I narrated We Need to Talk and two other pieces for episode 16 of the podcast, Three Minute Microfiction. White walls, sweet antiseptic, tubes and wires, electronic beeps, and the laboured, wheezing breath of my shrunken father. We need to talk. Soon. Not about the future or present. Now we've only got the past. But my phone distracts me. I wish we had more time. And words. Covid lockdowns provided the perfect environment for writing microfiction. Such as pandemic fiction, for me Engine magazine, Elephant in the Room and other 23-word stories, and Signs of the Second Coming in 2020 and 2021. Once again, I released Signs of the Second Coming as episode 25 of Tall and True Short Reads. At primary school in Perth, Western Australia, in the 1970s, I had a teacher who was also a lay preacher on the weekends. Before schoolwork, He started the day at our supposedly secular state school with the Lord's Prayer and Gospel readings. And his favourite scripture topic was signs of the second coming. In recent years, challenges by Writing New South Wales, the Australian Writers' Centre and the writing community on Twitter had me writing dozens of microfiction stories. 
And in March 2023, I set myself the goal of writing a 61-word story to mark my 61st birthday. I'm 61 today. Will you swim 61 laps? No, I've torn my shoulders. 61 push-ups? My shoulders, remember? Jog? No, my knees will seize. Ride 61 kilometres? Are you joking? Then why not read 61 chapters? Because it makes reading a chore. So what will you do? I'll write a 61-word story. I'd be grateful I'm here to write it. The Tall and True Microfiction Anthology, published in November 2023, is drawn from the Tall and True website and other sources and features 70 examples of my microfiction. Some are Hemingway-esque six-word stories, others one to a few sentences, and there are longer pieces, like the 460-word Her. I've presented the stories in chronological chapters, with insight into when, why, and how I wrote them. I've also provided links to story prompts on social media, and episodes if I've narrated the stories for tall and true short reads, like Her, We Need to Talk, and Signs of the Second Coming. And I wrote a new piece of microfiction for the final chapter, The End, 70 words long, one for each story in the anthology. I was there at the beginning, cradling you as a wrinkled newborn. I watched you take your first steps, kissed your cuts and bruises, and walked you to school. I taught you to drive, and collected you when the police caught you drink driving. I tried talking sense into you, and now I'm holding your hand. The doctors have turned off your life support, and I'm waiting for the end. Like all my writing, the end fuses elements from my life with my writer's imagination. I often reflect on the miracle of holding my wrinkled newborn son, my only child, for the first time, and on memories of watching him take his first steps, bandaging and soothing childhood cuts and bruises, walking him to school, teaching him to drive, and all the other magical moments I've loved about being a dad. Thankfully, my son is more sensible, and the road rules and policing are stricter than when his dad was a reckless young driver in the 1970s and 80s. However, like many parents, I suffer irrational angst at the thought of a late-night phone call when he's away from home, which I encapsulate in my story's closing line. As with pieces in McCreary's collection, the end is a glimpse of everyday life, albeit one all parents dread. It also demonstrates the power of writing to evoke emotions, happy or sad, whether in a novel, short story or microfiction. I hope readers enjoy Tall and True Microfiction as much as I enjoyed creating it. Perhaps my anthology will inspire you to dabble in the form, like Susan McCurry's Loopholes did for me in 2017. Hi, I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writer's website. I wrote this blog post in November 2023 to coincide with the publication of my fourth collection of writing, Tall and True Microfiction. Links to posts on my earlier short story collections, Both Sides of the Story, published in 2020, 12 Furious Months in 2021, and 12 More Furious Months in 2022, and my review of Loopholes by Susan McCreary are included in the show notes, as are links to the podcast episodes mentioned in this post, Her, We Need to Talk, and Signs of the Second Coming. I hope you enjoyed this insight into microfiction. You can read my blog posts, including this one, and selected short stories and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy the Tall and True Microfiction Anthology and all my short story collections from the Amazon Kindle, Apple Books and Kobo Online Bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be released shortly. In the meantime, please check your feed or the podcast website, tallandtrueshortreads.com, for earlier episodes from all four seasons and follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite app. Doing so helps me share my storytelling. You can support the podcast financially by making a small one-off or regular donation via the ACAR supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. Finally, please tell your family and friends about Tall and True Microfiction, Tall and True Short Reads, and the Tall and True Writer's Website.